Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're back in War Thunder looking at the F7F3, the plane which you could have gotten by doing all of the Operation Soma challenges. It was, so you basically had to get 36 out of the 40 challenges that were on offer. You can pay for them, but I ground through them, which I think uh, I kind of have to do just to see how much of a toil it is. To, uh, for the average player so I can get an understanding of what's going on. It is basically just another Tiger cast. When we compare it to the F7, F1, there aren't many differences. We'll get into that in a bit. But first of all, I want to talk about the fact that it's a Tier 4 premium uh, for the Americans. It's something that the Americans are definitely lacking. If you look at Tier 4 for the Americans, when it comes to premium planes, you basically have uh, stuff around 5.0. But nothing around 6. If you were lucky enough, like myself, to have the A26C45 Invader, which you could have got with challenges maybe a year or a half a year ago, or even, um, I believe, PS4 players got it, or Alpha Tester, something like that, that's also at 6.0. But the F7 F3 sits at 6.0 as well, and it is a high tier premium. And one thing that it's going to be very, very good at, at least for me personally, is to grind out the jets that I don't have, the B-57B, the F-9F5, and the last Sabre. Uh, by doing that, this basically means that America now has a high-tier, high-powered premium plane, which you can't buy, which I don't think you should be able to buy, uh, maybe later on down the line, but there's, you know, there's, there's not really much difference between it and the F-7, F-1, it basically just gives you a bit of a premium boost, obviously, uh, with it being premium, you get the 100% premium award on it, times 100, which is uh, nice, and it will be very useful for grinding out jets. So anyway, let's look at it from a standpoint of comparing it to the F7 F1, because obviously uh, I have railed on in the past the, about the F7 F1, and uh, thankfully it got changed. Uh, those, I remember talking about it, and I said I won't really go into much detail because there's no way that this thing will stay in its current state. I believe it used to have a lower BR, it used to also get an airspawn on quite a lot of maps against Germany. And because most Germans were playing at Tier 4 at that time, well, let's just say a lot of Germans decided to stop playing Tier 4 because they had F7Fs raining down from the skies when they were only at about 2,000 meters. It was one of the... Oops. It was... Sorry about that. It was one of the first times I'd seen a botched release of a plane. The F7F's flight model was not properly in the game at release. Its rudder did some very, very weird things. And also, uh, it was the first example I saw of a plane that I could remember of a, prop a completely overpowered plane at release. With its low of the yard that it had, with the speed that it had, with the guns that it had, with the air spawn on certain maps. You've got to remember, the F7F came around at a time where a lot of nations did not have their high-powered uh, planes. Against Britain, it was okay, because it would face stuff like the Tempest Mark V, which could not catch it, but at least it could do something about it. When its BR got increased, the F7Fs, it started facing Tempest Mark IIs, it started facing started to face Griffin Spitz, so it was alright. Against Germany, I remember many times facing stuff like Focke Wolf or 90A5s in this damn thing and tearing the A5s apart. Now that it's at 6.0, it faces stuff like D13s, D9s, D12s, and it's a hell of a lot better for the Germans. It also gets into some of its jet, ma jet matches. But it was the first example of a plane to me which was completely busted. And also, you've got to remember at the time when the F7 F1 was released, there was no lost control function. So you could dive at 800 kilometers an hour and pull straight up and go straight back into the clouds again. The lost control function definitely hampered the Tiger Cat a lot, but it is still very good, even at a 6 OBR. Now, the 6 OBR is a weird one, especially for America. Because you basically have two choices. You either have the Tiger Cat or you have the Bear Cat, or the AD2 if you want to get mauled in your sleep. There's also the B-17s. So, around 6.0, you have a very core, propeller-driven uh, lineup that you can have in Realistic, which causes some issues. Because 
A lot of the time you'll get into 7-0 matches. You'll face stuff like Arados, you'll face stuff like Hortons, you'll face stuff like ME262s, and the Tiger Cat can still keep up with them. You'll also face HE162s. Against Britain, you'll mainly face Tempest Mark IIs, uh, you know, the high tier uh, British, and also the uh, early Meteors. I faced a lot of Meteor F Mark III's in this when I was squatted up with my two squad mates who were in this battle as well, Jag and Fubar. Two very good pilots who are also using the F7 F1, where I'm using the F7 F3. So, you know, you some 6 BR is a terrible BR, because it, it shows how the matchmaking can be completely unfair. If you face stuff at 5 BR, which is possible, because it's the 1 BR plus or minus difference, the tiger, cat will ri the tiger Cat will rip you apart. You will have no chance in hell of fighting this thing. It climbs really well, it's got great speed uh, in a straight line, it has ridiculous amounts of nose-mounted guns which are very accurate, it has engines which have so much power, it can uh, energy fight really well, and let's say you get the jump on it, well he just dies and runs away. The only time you'll be able to kill this thing is either in a head-on, if you go for one, or if the tiger cat is the tiger cat pilot is stupid enough to turn with you after one turn or if somehow the tiger cat is caught low which should never happen unless here unless the pilot believes nobody else is high so you have to wait for the tiger cat pilot to make a mistake which i don't like in uh, gaming in general i do not like having to wait for an opponent to make a mistake now, let's go, uh, so obviously at 6-0, it's not too bad. At 6-0, it's alright when you face like Tempest Mark IIs and things like that, where there's stuff that can actually catch the damn thing when they're fully upgraded, because this is a fast aircraft. If it faces 7-0, the only, uh, the times that I've faced 7-0 aircraft, they've always been German. They've always been the ME262 uh, A-1, the Horse and the HE-162, and so forth. So the Tiger Cat actually doesn't do half bad. It struggles against the ME262 because it can't really catch it. But against the Horton, uh, generally Hortons stay low nowadays to try and get the ground kills. It can absolutely annihilate them with its guns. It can't turn with them, but it doesn't have to. You get one good shot on them, the Hortons are down. HE162s, they need to bring out a new model for the HE162. Or lower its BR, or do something because it is very reminiscent of the uh, what are they called the Yak 15s right now, and the Yak 15s are not very good aircraft. They're they're all right against propeller aircraft, but they are absolutely terrible if they get into jet matches, and that's the same thing with the HE162. And most of the time you will get into jet matches, and you will get slaughtered. Now, the Tiger Cat can easily deal with a lot of these aircraft, showing that even at 6 OBR, it can be really competitive, which, you know, cannot be said about a lot of, uh, a lot of planes. Another thing is the fact that, even though you have this huge BR spread, it just, as I said, it shows an issue with the matchmaking system, where you can either be faced with an enemy who you should massively dominate, or you should face an enemy who might actually put up a chance. It's a bit odd. Now, thank God the Tiger Cat doesn't get its air spawn anymore. If it's still got its air spawn, it would still be broken. But anyway, so there's also another issue at this BR, and the issue is heavy bombers. And these issues have, were there from uh, before when the B-17s were uh, definitely needed a bit of a tweak when they were basically just going around bombing airfields, especially on German maps and Hokkaido. Now we have a similar issue, but it is a, it's still American and it's in the form of the B-29. The B-29 has so many pounds of bombs. Eight 2,000 pounders, 4,500s if it wants to, right? So, yeah, that's, what, 20,000 pounds of bombs, something like that? And they can easily just go along, kill the bases, and try and destroy the airfield. And if there's three or four of them, they'll easily do that. Making games around this BR really, really tiresome. And most of the time, in the Tiger Cat, if you're in these mixed uh, battles, which you sometimes have, you'll just face them. 
uh, constantly, and you'll have to just shoot them down over and over again, which is hard to do in the Tiger Cat because you're such a big target, and they've got so many 50s, you're always going to struggle. Now, I will never fly the B-29. I've flown it a few times, I have it unlocked. I will not fly it because of this fact. It is not a balanced aircraft. It does not fit in the game, and I've talked about this in other videos, and I talked about it as well when the TU-4 got released and said it was going to have exactly the same issues, uh, even, uh, even worse. And guess what? It had exactly the same issues, even worse. So let's just kind of forget about that. Comparing the two aircraft, the F-7F3, the premium one that you get through the challenges, and the F-7F1, uh, which is in the actual tree after the F-8F1B, what's the difference? Uh, they're both at the same BR. They both basically have exactly the same performance. The F7F3 is slightly faster, and by slightly I mean like 10 kilometers faster. When I was flying with Jag and Fubar, they handled very, very much the same. I believe they've just, you know, copied the flight model, which they should do. I mean, it's basically the same aircraft, it's just got a bit more power in it. And that's, you know, that that's all, that's all that it needs. It's at the same BR now, because it has a bit more power, do I think it should be at a high BR? No, I don't. I don't think 10 kilometers an hour uh, when you have two fully uh, modif modified planes, I don't think that's too too much of a difference. Uh, if this thing was at 6.3, it would just face jets all the time and it would be amazingly boring. It would also have to fight and defend B-29s, which is also incredibly boring. <laughs> uh, so just from a personal point of view, I'm fine with it being at 6.0. Uh, but when when we're comparing the two, they are basically the same aircraft. The only difference is the premium. And also, one of the... I suppose the biggest difference is that the F7F3 can carry rockets. Uh, if you look at uh, your F7F1, or if you look at the F7F1, uh, you will see it can carry two 500-pounders, 1,000, and 1,000 pound and two 500s. So standard... You know, um, generally every fighter in the game now can carry some kind of bomb under it. Uh, the Tiger Cat is no exception. The F7F3 though, which is the premium one, you get all the bomb loads as listed before, but you also get rockets. You can get three tiny Tims, or two tiny Tims and a thousand pounder, eight uh, HVRs, uh, which is uh, high velocity air rockets or something like that, and then eight HVRs and a thousand pounder. So you can get uh, rockets on this thing. Now, would I take the rockets? No, I, I think this is a fighter first and an attacker second. Uh, it's seen as a naval fighter or a heavy fighter. I'd definitely label it as that. If you're going after ground targets, it is nice to have those options. Like, let's say you've nailed most of the team, there's only one of them left, something like that. It will be nice having uh, that uh, those extra tiny Tims because the tiny Tims are probably the best rockets in game and you don't really see them a lot uh, I believe they're on the Hellcats, uh, the F8F1 uh, let's just see if they're on the Hellcats yeah they're on the Hellcat, you can have two tiny Tims, I believe they're on the Bearcats as well uh, basically just the naval planes in a way uh, yeah you can get two tiny Tims on the Bearcat, but you get three on the F7F3, and it's really interesting because generally you see rockets being mounted on the wings, and therefore they're not very accurate. I mean, they can kind of go anywhere, but Tiny Tims are incredibly accurate in this game, which, you know, they should be. But also, one is mounted under the fuselage, and it, you know, it looks like a torpedo basically. Uh, generally, where if you look on a bow fighter or something where the torpedo would sit, that is where the tiny, the third tiny Tim for the F7, F3 sits. And it is very accurate because it's uh, mounted in the center. Uh, if you're comparing like guns, uh, if you look at guns which are on the wings compared to guns in the nose, the guns in the nose are going to be much more accurate just because, uh, you know, you don't have to worry too much about convergence and stuff like that. It's the same with rockets. Convergence and uh, when they explode is a massive factor. So having that centrally mounted rocket, which I can't really think of any other plane having, it's really, really good. It's amazingly accurate, and being a Tiny Tim makes it even better. So, is this a good premium? Uh, yes, I think this is the perfect type of premium. 
it's basically the same as the F7F1. It has a few modifications uh, when it comes to the... Uh, well, it's got the same modifications, but it's got the a slightly different secondary weapons, which will obviously slow you down and everything like that. Compared to the F7F1, you get, as I said, different rockets and things, but they don't have a massive impact on the game. Uh, it's it's basically the same aircraft. So this, when I talked about having premium aircraft, uh, I talked about having this as an idea, basically having uh, not a carbon copy, but a slightly different aircraft, which would be premium compared to the aircraft which is in the tree. Uh, get rid of captured aircraft. Lend lease, you could maybe work them into the normal tree. I think uh, that would work very well. But having aircraft which are very similar to their counterparts in the tree and making them premium, I'd be completely fine with, with slight differences. Like uh, maybe a different belt or something like that. So in that sense, I think the F7, F3 works really well. Uh, the the fact that it's very similar to its F7, F1. Uh, something I do want to comment on about the F7, Fs, which I find really odd, is when you look at the P51 and the P47, and I'll just have a look at the P38 to see if it's the same, the later variants of the P38. Uh, no, it's not weird. Um, so if you look at the P47 and the P51, if you look at their uh, if you look at their ammunition for their 50s, they get and and same with the Bearcat, the F8 F1B. Sorry, the F8 F1 Bearcat, not F8 F1B. They all have uh, M250s or the 12.7 M2 Brownings, and their ammunition. They get this tracer shell, which is basically APIT. And when you get a few shots, or when you go past an American plane and you get hit by a few shells and you're instantly set on fire, that's where the APIT comes in. Because that's basically what it does. It, it hits you and you blow up. It is one of the greatest things about American aircraft around uh, this tier. But it seems like, for some reason, they haven't given this to the F7F, and they haven't given it to the P-38, have they given it to the new P-47? Let's just have a look. Unlock that the other day. Yes. So, they get the APIT M20 armor-piercing incendiary tracer bullet. And it is an incredible ammunition type. It's, as I said, one of the things that makes Tier 4 Americans absolutely amazing. But for some reason, the Tiger Cat doesn't get these, and I'm, I'm just wondering if there's a reason for that. If is there a reason why the uh, 50 cal shells, because they're the same gun, and th this is a problem that all of the Americans have. For some reason, a lot of them have uh, the same gun, or you know, you know, basically labeled the same gun, right? Maybe, maybe there's a difference when it comes to which plane. Uh, I don't know a ton about like uh, American planes and stuff like that. Uh, because, to me, it looks the same. Like, when you compare the P-47D28, it has the 12.7 M2 Browning machine guns. When you look at the F4U1D Corsair, it has the 12.7mm M2 Browning machine guns. But if you look at their ammo, the tracer on the F4U1D is TTTTT API, where the other one is just APIT, and I'm just wondering if there's a reason for that. And because obviously APIT would have been better in the war. It's as simple as that. So why wouldn't they push it onto the F7F? I mean, they've put it on the Bearcat, and I'm just wondering if it's just a conscious decision by Gaijin for some point, realizing that maybe it is a problem. But that's just that's not just for the F7F3, it's also for the F7F1. Now, I've talked about it being a very good premium, uh, in that sense. I think it's a very, very good premium. But is it a good Challenge aircraft? Now, the way I see Challenge aircraft, I talked about this before in my other videos about them. I think a Challenge aircraft just has to be something a bit different, a bit wacky, you know? And it, it is lovely to get a really good 6.0 Tier 4 premium, very good aircraft for the Americans uh, to grind out the tree. But, you know, when we look at the other event aircraft, you know, the TB3, the MBR, uh, even the KV-220, they're, they're slightly different, uh, weird variations of aircraft, and I really like that type of aircraft, something that isn't just a copy of something in the tree. I think the copy of something in the tree should just be a normal premium that anyone could guess, and then the challenge aircraft are just odd, weird ones, like the Fokker Wolf 189, A-1. And... For some reason, they just, you know, they they don't exist uh, at this tier. 
Like, I, I think you could do a few wacky aircraft. Like, there's the, uh, the flying pancake. I think that could be something that could be at this tier and be absolutely useless, but still be interesting to fly. But I suppose if people are this far in on their challenges, they want to get something big out of it. I, I just think for Challenger aircraft, there should be something different. There should be something unique uh, compared to uh, other things. And also, if you want to see the, the major difference of identifying the F7F3 to the F7F1, the F7F3 has two skins. Uh, it has the standard one, which is very standard and looks exactly like the F7F1, so you won't be able to tell it's an F7F3. The uh, Testing Ground 113 one is the one that I'm using in the video, and you may see slight differences where the combat flaps are purple, the rudder and the elevator are purple, the uh, engine uh, mounts are purple, and the nose is purple. And then, if you're good enough and you get 550 kills in this thing, you get the VMF 312 skin, which is actually very nice. It basically has green rings around the engines, around the wings and the fuselage, uh, followed by white rings around that. And I really like that skin, and even though you need 550 kills, I feel like grinding out the jets, I may actually be able to do 550 kills in this thing. It is a wonderful aircraft to fly. It always has been. It, it was on release. Is it overpowered anymore? No, I think increasing its BR was a good idea. Uh, is the F7F3 that different to the F7F1? No, it is not really. It's very, very slightly faster. And I mean that, very, very slightly faster. But it is amazing to fly, especially if you can get a squad of them together, go for it. Get a massive squad of four people, get these big birds in the air, hear them, because one of the biggest things is uh, if you can hear one going past you, oh, it just, it sounds absolutely magnificent. That's why I like flying them in a squad. You you basically get close to each other, sit in the cockpit, and you can hear the roar of the engines go past you. It's absolutely beautiful. So, uh, I think I'll leave it here. It's a wonderful aircraft. I hope you were able to get the challenges. And if you don't, you know, as I said, you can still buy them if you want to buy them. And if you can't, well, just know... You just go and fly the F7F1. You get the same experience with it. It's still a very fun aircraft. I'll catch you next time.